Hey, Ed from Precision Gun Reviews here, and today we're back with our final review of the Beretta PX4 Storm Compact in 9mm. This is a polymer framed, hammer fired, double action, single action 9mm pistol. It has a double stack 15 round magazine, and it has a unique and interesting rotating barrel recoil mechanism. You can see the way that this looks here, and we'll, we'll talk about that in depth a little bit more. This is unloaded, and you can see that barrel rotating out of the way. We'll get back to that. Okay, what we have here is a 6.8 inch long pistol. It is five inches tall. Uh, I measured it myself at 5.1. Beretta measures it at 5.0. The width, this is interesting, we're going to go through a lot of numbers here. So the width, if we're looking at these wings here, these safety decocker levers, this is where Beretta measures it at um, 1.42 inches. I took a measurement here at the frame, and I got 1.19 inches. And the slide here is a little bit narrower, it's 1.13 inches. Another important part is the grip. Here it is 1.18 inches. So when you see those numbers online, you see 1.42, that's deceptive. Beretta's being uh, slightly conservative, but they could really say that this is a 1.2, you know, 1.18, 1.19, 1.2 inch pistol. The weight is listed at 27.2 ounces. I weighed it with the magazine in place at 26.95 ounces and without the magazine at 24 even. Moving on, we, we're going to talk about these magazines. These are 15 round 9mm magazines. We have this orange follower. Uh, very stiff spring, you know, it puts those rounds up nose first very nicely. We have cutouts on both sides and we'll talk about that magazine release in a minute. Here we have witness holes. There are not, there's not a hole for every round, but we have a few there. And these are great mags, you know, they're very solid. They are made in Italy. They're, you know, it's possible these are Metgar mags, who knows. Um, another interesting thing we can look at here is you see the angling there on the base plate. This is something I noticed this time. Um, we're going to take a look at where they insert here. We have a little bit of an indent here, it tapers in, and then this flares out on the base plate, and that gives you a good place to grip the magazine. If you ever have some sort of a malfunction that needs the magazine stripped, but it's not, um, it's not obtrusive, it's subtle. As for the mag release, it does eject well. Looking at the mag well itself, it's, uh, it's not very beveled, but the, the mags have quite a taper to them, and getting the mag in there quickly is not a problem. The mag release itself is a polymer, and they have three different sizes. They, this one doesn't come with the three different sizes. You can purchase that kit. Uh, this is the smallest size, I believe, but they make a really big extended one that's available. You can check the video for the compact carry that shows the much larger magazine release. And that is a reversible mag release. It's not ambidextrous out of the box, but it is reversible. And talking about ambidextrous features, we can continue and look at our slide stop slide release, which is gigantic, big and extended. Um, we can see that that works very well as a slide release, barely any pressure, and you get that slide to come home. The safety decocker levers, they are ambidextrous as well. This model is the F model, which means that it is a safety and decocker, whereas the G model, which is available, is just a decocker, so if you decock, this would spring back up automatically, so you could never put it on safe. You could never end up with a dead trigger 
by accident because it will always spring back up and give you tension on your trigger. Moving on, we can take a look. We have a small Picatinny rail here. It does have one slot. Um, you're going to have to work to find the right accessories that fit there because it's so short. But I assure you that there are some that do. I believe uh, the Olight fits, if I'm not mistaken. Continuing on to the slide serrations, we have front and rear slide serrations. They don't look like much. They don't even feel like much. Um, the The slide is pretty slick. It has this Beretta Bruneton finish, which is uh, kind of a baked on enamel. And I think one benefit of the Bruneton finish is it does make for a very slick surface. So you have a smooth running firearm, but um, it doesn't have a great purchase for your fingers on this particular slide. However, if you are using these big wings here, if you get your thumb in front of those, then you have a really good place to grab from. It's just these can be a little sharp depending on how rapidly you're grabbing that. So uh, that's one thing to consider. However, the, the fact that this is a fairly easy to rack slide combats that slickness. It's, it's one of the easier slides to rack of uh, most of the pistols of this size. If we look at these sights, we have a three dot sight picture. Very nice, very clear and squared off in the back. And the front sight is, I would say, neither too wide nor too narrow. So you have a really good sight picture. And these are both dovetailed in. Okay, so this is adjustable and replaceable. And we should also note these are metal sights. So really good sights. The sight radius is 5.2 inches, which is actually smaller than um, a lot of other firearms of this size, simply because of the way that this slopes up here. Typically you might have a blocky rear of your slide and then you could push the um, push that rear sight backwards and actually just an interesting note about this gun it's it's sort of the same size as a Glock 19 uh, it's the same height it is notably shorter though so in sort of the the let's compare everything to a Glock and use use Glock sizes as our measurements this would be something like a Glock 26 X and what I mean by that is it has, here's a Glock 26 slide. It has a very similar slide length to a 26, but it's as tall as a 19. So it allows you to get a good grip on the gun. You have a full grip. This is a, basically a, a really comfortable, easy to control ergonomic pistol. It does have three separate back straps it comes with. And I have here the sort of medium size back strap. It gives a little bit more of a bulge here, whereas the small, which comes installed, sort of flattens this bit out. If we want to look closely, as far as ergonomics are concerned, we have um, these kind of pyramids on here. I don't want to get too close. So front and rear, we have this pyramid job and they give a good purchase on the firearm. The sides here don't have much texturing at all, so they could be slick depending on uh, you know, what condition your hands are in. Otherwise, it's an ergonomic grip. It has, it has a good angle. It presents well, um, just right out of, out of a holster. I like that. If we take a look at this hammer, this is a commander style hammer. And what I read on their site was that the intention of these, I, I'm not very familiar with uh, customizing my hammers, etc. But this commander style hammer is intended to reduce the weight of, of the hammer affecting your follow up sight picture. I don't know. What I like about this 
about this whole design in general. And remember, we spoke about how this reduces your sight radius, this sort of sweeping forward design. And um, the thing that it does allow is without having a big beaver tail or a blocky rear sight, this lets you get your thumb here, if need be, for, I mean, not really for pulling back on the hammer to like manually put it into single action mode, but more so for drawing and holstering, mostly holstering, for when you put the gun down into the holster, because this doesn't have a big beaver tail pushing your thumb away, you can actually hold on to this and make something like appendix carry a little bit more safe for yourself. I can show you sort of the alternative to that. Um, here we have here we have the 92x, and although you can get up over there, you can like get on top. I have this beaver tail kind of just jabbing right in my thumb, and depending on the gun, some of them might completely prevent that. And depending on your hands too, maybe you have smaller hands than me. Okay, let's take a look at the trigger. I'm gonna drop the magazine and we're gonna get up close and personal here with this trigger. Check that again for you so you don't yell at me. All right, so what we have here is a double action and single action trigger. This is a polymer trigger, but it has a smooth, even face, which is very comfortable. And I, it's a good trigger pull overall. I don't know the weight, um, but the double action is not incredibly heavy like some other double actions I've used, which is nice. Um, what I do have numbers for is the trigger reach. And when combined with that 1.18 inch width, we can get an understanding of how this is gonna feel in the hand just by numbers. So this is a, a 2.9 inch trigger reach. And on the double action, it pulls right around 2.4. And it's a, it's a pretty smooth pull. It pulls through, you have, you have weight in the trigger right from basically this point. We get a very slight amount of take up and now we have to apply even pressure all the way through and it breaks there. And only like a 10th of an inch over travel. Now if we pull it back to single action, this pull, is very light. We have all this is take up. This is just empty, no pressure. And from this point where we hit this wall, it breaks immediately. There's there's no creep whatsoever. It's just at a wall that that immediately breaks and has that one tenth of an inch over travel. And that single action trigger reach is 2.6 inches, with the pull being around 2.35 inches. So it's short. This is a short take up, and it's really it's a really fine trigger. Um, I like it a lot. Now, um, excuse me, to look at the reset, I'll be quiet. So it resets right there. Um, so just the touch outside of the um, the original position, it, it's, it resets just like right there, not quite down to the wall. Let's do it again. We have the wall kind of here-ish. And the reset's there, so we have that much from the reset back to the wall. But I'll tell you, this is a, it's a sweet single action for sure. And double action is solid, you know, it's fine, it's good. Uh, so I'm very pleased with the trigger on this gun. What it allows for, uh, in combination with a lot of the other design of this gun, is um, follow-up shots to be very rapid and accurate. It's a combination of the trigger, the uh, maybe that hammer that I've never even considered before, and of course the rotating barrel, which we can take a look at right now. This is a, it's a 3.27 inch barrel and it's cold hammer forged 
for durability. And the way to, to field strip this gun is very simple. It's much like a Glock. You pull down on these two, but you don't even need to pull the slide back. If I do that, it's ready to go. And they're ready for the slide to come off. All right, I'm gonna bring this back down to the table because it's a lot easier to do that. Here we have a very small recoil spring, okay? And uh, this guide rod is polymer and it inserts into what is our locking block. It has this lug here that inserts into, so this hole is where we have our recoil spring and guide rod. And this locking lug is what inserts into a groove on the barrel. The barrel needs to be rotated to come out. Okay, so we have this groove on the barrel, and as this slides back, it rotates. Boom. Okay, so it sits in this position, and then this rotates out of the way, and that's the recoil to unlock the slide. And it locks in a couple positions. It locks, as we saw, outside of the slide, you know, if we're looking at it this way. It's going to lock up right there, and it also locks up against this inside the slide. So it's locking on both sides. It's more like a, like, like a rifle bolt. It's a really good system, and it never comes offline. This barrel goes straight back, just that slight amount that I showed you. It never tilts, never does anything like that, so the energy on it is, is rotational, and doesn't cause additional felt recoil. And it achieves the end result of um, a very minimal felt recoil as well as faster reacquisition of target. One thing that's interesting though is that because of this rotating design and the fact that it goes backwards instead of just tilting in place is we have a very similar size to, this is a Glock 26 barrel. So the gun is usually considered to be about the same size as a Glock 19, but you can see the barrel size is closer to a Glock 26, and that's kind of what I was saying. It's like a Glock 26X, the, the long handle version of a Glock 26. Looking inside the slide, we have not much going on in here, as usual. Space here for the hammer to strike. We do have our firing pin block. This is the classic Beretta design where this piece rises up out of the top of the slide as you pull. So it's drop safe. It's a safe, very safe firearm in general. External extractor. And uh, let's go ahead and put this thing back together. I'll probably just skip forward through this because YouTube, you know, drop that in there. Drop that in there. Everything, when you put this gun back together, can only go in a particular way. Just quickly taking a look at the frame before we get to putting the gun back together. We have these very small tabs here for the slide to ride on. You know, I would hope this was a little bit more robust, but this is what we have. It's like a little bit of metal embedded into the polymer is what it looks like to me. So I want to follow up on that ability to get back on target with just a, a look here at how this works. So see how high up that round comes? It's a snap cap, but um, it is basically aligned right with the barrel. If we take a look at that, okay, and then we take a look at a Glock 26, you see the difference? How high up that round is? So the Glock 26 is aiming at the feed ramp in there. It's, I don't know if there's light, but it's aiming at the feed ramp that it can only really access because the, the barrel is tilted, whereas this is aiming basically directly down the chamber. So that also assists in uh, reliable function. You know, this gun is not going to have 
many malfunctions, and that's exactly what I've found. I've, I've used multiple PX4s over the years, and I've never had a single hiccup on any of them, period. They, they just kind of work flawlessly. Um, you know, people will say that this rotating barrel runs the risk of getting gummed up, I don't know if that's true. It makes sense to think that, but I don't know that that's necessarily true. It would be nice to do a, a long-term torture test in terrible conditions, mud and dirt and stuff. But otherwise, the gun is a, you know, it mechanically functions very well and very reliably. We also have some of the other things that make it a long-lasting and durable pistol. We have, as I mentioned, this barrel is cold hammer forged. So what that means, or should mean, is that the barrel will last a long time. It, it will be a very durable barrel. This Bruneton finish is excellent for corrosion resistance. Um, it's, it's a kind of baked on enamel that is pretty much impervious to the elements. The only problem is it can wear and chip off, and that'll expose the steel underneath. You might see well-used Beretta PX4s with, with a lot of holster wear or all kinds of wear from use, but um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the steel has been revealed. That just means that the Bruneton has kind of worn down a little bit. The accuracy of this gun, I think I discussed it a little bit. Uh, it's really good and easy to, to shoot accurately quickly. So follow-up shots are fast, accurate, it has the, the really good single action trigger, a solid reset, the rotating barrel that keeps it on line and keeps that barrel lower in the gun. We have this commander hammer, just a variety of things come together to make it so that this gun is a good shooter. And again, we have you know, the small size slide on a, on a good size grip here. Yeah, so I would say it's a very reliable gun, very durable gun, and uh, it's a very accurate gun. In, in so many ways, it's, it's really somewhat ideal, especially if you are interested in safety features, like having a manual safety. And if you're not, then there's the decock only model. If you are someone who is happy with a double action, single action trigger. As far as price goes, we already saw the compact carry model that I showed you previously on the channel, and that carries an MSRP of 800 bucks. This one has an MSRP of 650. So 650 is roughly about the price that I was seeing the compact carry online at discount. This one's MSRP is 650, and I've seen it at 500, 550 something like that. So this is sort of the, the less expensive option. What it lacks is the sort of tuned trigger. Um, it, it actually has this ambidextrous slide release, which the compact carry doesn't have. And it has these big wings on these slide um, mounted safety decocker levers, which you can replace uh, for 40, 45 bucks, I think, on Beretta's website. And I think it's a great option both for carry and for home defense. It's, it's a really good gun. And especially with this one's price tag at 500 bucks, you have the option to get in at the $500 level, or you have the option to get the, the really upgraded version in the compact carry at a higher price. So that's it for the PX4 Storm Compact in 9mm. Uh, it's a recommendation from me. I think it's a great gun, and I will be holding on to a PX4 for the foreseeable future myself. If there's any better recommendation than that, I don't know what it is. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, click that bell, get those notifications, and until next time, as always, stay safe out there. I just wanted to give a quick shout out and thanks to the gun store of Conway, South Carolina. They help us transfer in all of our firearms for review. 
and you should check out the gun store at scgunstore.com. They are a full-service guns and gear shop with an indoor range. They stock a wide selection of handguns, shotguns, suppressors, NFA items, tactical rifles, hunting rifles and gear. They are fully stocked with all calibers of ammunition. They have gun safes, holsters, magazines. They do gunsmithing on site if you happen to be in the Conway, South Carolina area. Additionally, they hold training courses for those in the area. And they also offer a fully automatic experience in their gun range with an AR-15 or a Thompson 45 Tommy gun. They've got knives, they've got used firearms, parts, accessories, really just about anything you could think of related to firearms, home, and personal defense. I recommend you take a trip over to scgunstore.com, and no matter where you are, go to shop.scgunstore.com, where you can shop their inventory online and have it delivered right to your local FFL. That's The Gun Store of Conway, South Carolina. Thanks for making all the reviews that you see here on PGR possible.